Hello, welcome back to Chat About It, Don't Shout About It with me, Rachel, the Queen of the Woke, as crowned by one of my haters. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to a new mini target of 1,200 subscribers by the end of August. Now, thank you to everyone who has subscribed already. I really couldn't run this channel without you. Now, every time the Olympics is on, I always make sure that I tune in for the gymnastics. That's the one thing that I really truly love about the Olympics. However, after seeing the opening ceremony the other day, I've switched off and I've no intention of watching it this year. Now, if you saw my video yesterday about the TikTok reactions, then you'll see that's also the general consensus of, of TikTok as well. Please do go and check out that video. I've tried with this video today to go down a, a slightly different approach as to what the other content creators are doing. I'm trying to be a, as balanced as I possibly can. I don't know if it will come across that way. We will see. What has made people so angry is that this is a depiction or a mockery, in their opinion, of the Last Supper. Other people have compared it also to the Feast of Dionysus. I come from a family of theists, atheists and agnostics, and we all drew the same conclusion, that it was bashing Christianity. Now, whenever someone creates something that's entertainment or art form or any form of content for people to read and view, be it in, uh, in person or online, you will very much be open to the criticism. And that's the way the world works. The opening ceremony should have been a fanfare and inclusive event that honours all the nations taken part. Is it possible that the writing team forgot that in the bid to be inclusive, consciously or subconsciously, ostracized a religion for the sake of artistic expression that is allowed in France. Now let me know what you think about that question in the comments below. Now I just want to also be clear on something before I cover anything else. Yesterday I was talking about Greece as well as Christianity in my video. I want to be perfectly clear that I used it as an example because people were talking about it and saying that it's okay because that's what it was depicting. If you are to compare which religion is mocked more, it's definitely Christianity. And I would say that everything that is going on, in my opinion, coming from a mixed belief family, that it is cope and shilling and going on more so. And as art is open to interpretation, what may mean one thing to the Olympics can actually mean something to everyone else in the world. So this article comes from The Guardian. I've linked the full one below. These are just selected comments from this particular article. A controversial tableau in the Olympic ceremony denounced by Christian and conservative critics as an offensive parody of The Last Supper was in fact inspired by a 17th century Dutch painting of the Greek Olympian gods art historians have said. Does this painting remind you of something? The Magnin Museum in the French city of Dijon asked, inviting people to come and admire the feast of the gods painted by artist Jean van Bijler between 1635 and 1640. So the director has also said that wasn't my inspiration. He told BFM TV, I think it was pretty clear. There's Dionysus who arrives at the table. Why is he there? Because he is the god of feasting of wine and father of Sikana, the goddess of the river. So apologies if I butchered that. The idea, Jolly said, was more to have a big pagan party linked to the gods of Olympus, Olympian, Olympianism. You'll never find in me any kind of wish to mock to denigrate anything at all. I wanted a ceremony that repairs and rec reconciles. And the historians also go on to say, so there's no question in this tableau as an insult to Christians, the historian said, we're talking about the Olympic gods in a representation of Van Bijler's work. The Greek gods come together on Olympus where at the ancient games took place. The museum did, however, acknowledge similarities between the work and the Last Supper, which was painted more than a century earlier before the Protestant Reformation, which rejected Catholic art and even destroyed many works. That may go some way to explaining the confusion. 
In context of the Reformation, the artist found a strategy for painting a Christ-related Last Supper under cover of a mythological subject matter, the museum said. So that's their defense. Make of that what you will. So, of course, they had a press conference and they released an apology, if you can call it that. This is what Anne de Camp had to say. Now, this sound clip comes via the star. I can't actually show you the video due to the content actually featuring a nut sack. All of my sources are linked below. There was never uh, an intention uh, to, to show disrespect to uh, any uh, religious group. Uh, on the contrary, uh, I think that Majorni really tried to uh, really intend to, to celebrate community tolerance. That was uh, his word yesterday. And uh, looking at the result of the polls that we shared, uh, we believe that this ambition was, uh, was achieved. If people uh, have taken any offense, uh, we are, of course, really, really sorry. In addition to that, the director, Thomas Jolly, also said, our intentions was never to be impertinent or to be subversive, as I said earlier. Our idea was simply that with this great diversity, we wanted to collectively include everyone. In France, we have the freedom of artistic creation. That's the first article in the law of freedom of creation. I take advantage of it like with other freedom we have in France, in this country. We're lucky about that. There was no desire to give a more specific message. It was simply a Republican message. In France, we're allowed to love who we want, how we want. In France, we can believe or not believe. In France, we have a lot of rights, and I wanted to convey those values throughout the ceremony. Now, whilst this may be the case in France, that isn't necessarily the case worldwide. I agree that people should love who they wish to love, but this opening ceremony was not the place to push agendas where it could actually be illegal in other countries. There's also a child in it, and at one point she stood in front of this man with a testicle hanging out. I can't show you that, obviously, due to YouTube policies, but later on she's also in a ballroom hold with an adult man. And Thomas Jolly also gave another statement, which is actually sourced via The Guardian. The idea was to have a pagan celebration connected to the gods of Olympus. You will never find in me a desire to mock or denigrate anyone. The idea was to create a big pagan party in link with the god of Mount Olympus. So I said that bit earlier and I've included it again because can I just ask to anyone, did this actually look like a depiction of a big pagan party with a link to the gods of Mount Olympus, you know, to anyone? Did it look like that to you? Because I would actually then question, is this piece abstract then? Could that, uh, could that be a possibility? And also, could this be a possibility? If this was purposely based on the Greek painting with the knowledge that the majority worldwide would actually equate this to a snub at Christianity because that is the most recognisable faith and easy to bash. Could that also be a possibility? I know he has said about his intentions of not like, wanting to insult and uh, all of that. However, he's not actually working alone in this project, even though he's taking a more direct hit. He was actually part of a co-writing team for the event. The rest of the team featured Fanny Herrero, Leila Slimani, excuse me, Patrick Bolteron and Damien Gabriak. The sources of inspiration were Sukrena, uh, the goddess of the river Sain, and I King Ifito, who is, is said to have created the 9th century BC to try and bring peace to ancient Greece. There were no other instructions other than to capture the French spirit. By the way, this is from Deadline. Now, Please don't go bringing hate to these people. It's actually up to the Olympics to deal with their employees with regards to this and apologize properly to the public for the lack of structure to this opening ceremony. And I don't think they have done it properly, in my opinion. If this was more of a free-for-all, then they really should have made it more of a watertight script when they wrote it in 2023 with more watertight staging because I felt like that was also a bit of a free-for-all, especially around that little scene as well. Because 
if these messages were really supposed to be about Greek mythology, then it was not made very clear in the staging of it, in my opinion. And it is so bad that even the YouTube channel for the Olympics have removed the opening ceremony from their YouTube channel. Now, this supposed pagan party looked like to me that it was Christianity and it was the Last Supper. This community tolerance that Anne de spoke of didn't appear to be tolerant to me. You remember that TikTok I played on my YouTube channel yesterday? The one about the horses? Let's take another look. I think symbolism is real. Look at what just took place during the opening ceremonies for the Olympics. Here we saw a hidden cloaked figure riding on a horse. Behind him, what would seem totally abnormal is a pair of wings. What do we know about Lucifer and his fall? Well, he was a fallen angel and one third of the angels rebelled and fell with him. Revelation 6 mentions the four horsemen of the apocalypse. One references to a white horse as well as a pale horse. So I looked and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. In Revelation 6, we're told of the beast that rides the white horse. In Revelation 13, 3, it tells us, And all the world marveled, and followed the beast. And what do we see here? That same cloaked figure riding a white horse. What's behind him? All the nations of the world following after him. This stuff isn't a coincidence. The imagery suggests that it's pointing exactly to the beast or the antichrist of the book of Revelation. I just so happen to agree with that TikTok. So I'll be honest with you. I'm not a Christian. I'm agnostic. But I grew up in a very Christian household. And in my experience, and this is my experience, I just want to be clear on this because I'm not going to be accusing other Christians of, of, of doing this. I've seen little pushback with the mockery of the faith within my family or the churches that I frequented when I was growing up. And I sometimes wonder if people feel like they can actually get away with mocking Christians and Christianity and the, and the faith to the extent that they do because Christians don't push back like other faiths do. Except this time people did actually push back because of the notions and the other connotations behind it. And no wonder boycott the Olympics was truly trending. But it was really the Christianity that really boiled people over. It would seem that this is not the only anti-Christian thing that has happened already in the Olympics. This tweet came from Died Suddenly. The opening ceremony wasn't the only anti-Christian message sent to the world by the Olympic Committee. Two weeks before the Games, Brazilian surfer Jao Chianca was ordered to remove the image of Jesus Christ from his surfboard or be barred for competing. Chianca com commented in a now deleted Instagram story that he was not authorized to have Jesus on the board because Christ is a religious figure and the games have strict rules and focus on total neutrality. Joao appears to have complied and is competing today. Do you believe he should have stood his ground and dropped out? Well, what do you think about that? Do you think that should have happened? Do you think he should have stood his ground and dropped out? That's not the only circumstance we have. We also have this one. Jesus is the truth. Raisa Leo was told she wasn't allowed to praise Jesus Christ at the Olympics. Leo responded by saying Jesus is the way, the truth and the life in sign language to protest. So I went and had a look at the Olympic Charter as well, because there are actually quite strict rules within the Olympics itself. It's a very long document, 113 pages of it. Um, but I had a look at this one. I thought this was a little bit interesting. Number 44, um, rule number four, an NOC shall only enter competitors upon the recommendations for entries given by national federations. If the NOC approves thereof, it shall transmit such entries to the OCOG. The OCOG must acknowledge the receipt. NOCs must investigate the validity of the entries proposed by the national federations and ensure that no one has been excluded for racial, religious or political reasons or by reason of 
other forms of discrimination. So I thought that was a little bit interesting. And I also went and found rule number 50. Rule 50 of the Olympic Charter provides a framework to protect the neutrality of sport and the Olympic Games. It states, no kind of demonstration or political, religious or racial propaganda is permitted in any sites, venues or other areas. So some people have said that the opening ceremony has broken its own rules. I haven't said that. Some of the people have said that. I will provide a link below as to the site that has said that. But the but the fact that the religious mockery and propaganda was so extreme in the opinion of a particular company that they actually re re withdrew their advertising from the Olympics. This particular tweet was from the company Ceasefire. We were shocked by the mockery of the Last Supper during the opening ceremonies of the Paris Olympics. Ceasefire will be pulling out uh, pulling out advertising from the Olympics. So in my opinion, yes, it was a mockery of the Last Supper and Christianity with a pushed agenda that in other countries would actually be considered illegal, despite what the director has said and the defense from Anne de Camps. Other religions wouldn't have been mocked in this way. It just wouldn't have happened. And it has been good to actually see pushback on this, particularly from someone like myself, an agnostic, but I grew up in a religious family where I didn't see that kind of pushback. I would say that they will need to investigate this fully and as to why this has come to be like this. The director is saying one thing, the committee is saying another, and the world is saying another. That's it from me today. Let me know what you think about all of this. I'll see you tomorrow at 4pm for Keep It Positive. Like and subscribe, chat about it, don't shout about it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.